Hello and welcome to these reflections on Today Christ is Born, praying with the icon of the Holy Nativity. My name is Brother James and we're here in the chapel of the Monastery of the Society of St. John the Evangelist in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I want to turn our attention now to the bottom of the icon, down to the faithful midwives. The midwives don't appear in scripture, but they're part of early Christian and early iconographic, iconographic tradition. It's often the case that where scripture is silent, we want to fill in the gaps. And so tradition has filled in the gaps and has provided us with these two midwives. Tradition has even given them names, Zolomi and Salome. Part of the legend around Salome is the, le the story of her healing. Unlike Zalomi, Salome did not believe that it was possible that Mary was a virgin. When she touched Mary in her disbelief, her hand withered, only to be restored when she touched the infant Jesus. Tradition goes on to say that she is the same Salome who appears in the gospel who went to the tomb on that first Easter day. And so this story of healing also becomes a story of resurrection. The manger is united to the cross the cave with the tomb, the infant with the risen Lord. But it's not the healing story that fascinates me. It's their simple presence. In this particular icon, Mary is, is reclining rather than seated. In some icons, the midwives are absent and Mary sits. In those icons, the divinity of Christ is being emphasized. Childbirth is painless, bloodless, and Mary doesn't need to recover after childbirth, nor does she need help. There are no midwives to clean the newborn no midwives to care for the new mother. As I said, in those icons, childbirth is simple, pain-free, bloodless, as befits a god. But in this particular version of the icon, something is different. Mary is reclining. There are midwives present, indicating perhaps that Mary is recovering from pain and trauma and perhaps even fear. We're not in fact told anything about Mary's labor in scripture. We're simply told that the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. But surely this birth was a little more complicated than that. And that's what fascinates me. And that's why the presence of Zolomi and Salome are important. They suggest here that in the incarnation, God took on human flesh. In the birth of Jesus, God became human. And in taking on human flesh, God took on human existence, even human limitations. Which means that God in the person of Jesus took on our limitations, took on our finitude. The divine became human, the infinite became finite. And in becoming human, 
God took on all of it. The pain, the anxiety, the fear, even death. But God also took on joy, wonder, and delight. Because they too are part of being human. In other words, God and Jesus took on the limitations of human existence, but he also took on the wonder of human existence. And that's what Zalomi and Salomi suggest to me today. So as you pray with these two faithful midwives, you may want to pray for your own healing. What do you need to be healed from? Reach out and touch the infant Lord and be healed. You may also want to reflect on your own human limitations, perhaps brought on by age or physical ability. Pray about your own human limitations. And remember that God shares those with you. But you may also want to pray about your own delights. Pray about the delight you have in being alive, in being human. So as you pray with Salome and Zalome, pray your sorrows and your joys. Pray your limitations and your possibilities. Give thanks for your life and give thanks for your failures. Give thanks for those things which delight you and for those things which challenge you. Give thanks for your joys and your successes. But above all, give thanks for this human life which you have been given as a gift from God and which you share with none other than the maker and giver and creator and author of life. Jesus Christ, for your life is his life, and his life is yours. In many ways, Psalm 139 sums it all up. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. As you pray with Salome and Zalome, remember that you have been marvelously made and like Jesus, share in this human life full of possibilities 
and limitations, full of sorrows, but also joys. Pray for your joys today.
rejoicing in the gifts of God, let us pray as our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.